Now, why am I making this video in February, you might be asking. I just claim it to be Halloween all year round in this household. I mean, today I'm wearing a Halloween night shirt. Time is made up, I don't abide by the man-made calendar. And also because by the time that Halloween ends comes out, I want enough time to have passed where I can react to these predictions. I did the same thing for the most recent Scream, where in March of last year, I made all of my Scream 5 predictions and then I just reacted to them last month. So that's why this video is happening now and not like in September. <laughs> by the way, I have some new decor today, if you didn't notice. Guess who just met Nick Castle and got his autograph right here? Don't worry, I will get that framed. I met him at CreepyCon, I also got this at CreepyCon, and definitely be sure to check out my review of that con on my vlog channel, because I had a great experience meeting Nick Castle, got a lot of really cool stuff that I want to share, but I had a terrible experience with Andrew Brianarski. So that'll be linked down below, but I'm done with the intro, I just have one disclaimer before we get started. I didn't do any research for this video, the only thing that I did is I rewatched Halloween Kills because I just got the extended cut with the alternate ending on Blu-ray. I really wanted to rewatch a bunch of the movies of the franchise, like the original H2O in particular, and then like the newest trilogy movies, but I decided not to because I'm definitely going to be doing that in October, right before Halloween Ends comes out. I just try my best not to overwatch movies that I really love because I don't want to risk getting tired of them. There are some movies that I can watch as many times as I want and I don't get tired of them, but movies that I really love and I love the experience of, I try not to watch too often. Also, my subs have heard this next part a thousand times, but I just have to reiterate for anyone new here. I don't watch trailers and I don't like knowing anything before I go into a movie. And if it's a director I like, I don't even want to know a log line, I don't even need to see the poster. Like with Jordan Peele's Nope, I'm not going to watch the trailer, don't want to know what it's about. So don't expect me to be actually trying to guess what happens based on like a bunch of research and like actually trying to figure out what's going on. This is all just for fun, except I do have a couple predictions that I feel pretty strongly about, because I did pick up on some foreshadowing in Halloween Kills, but more on that later. As I did with my Scream 5 predictions, I'm gonna make a bingo card so that we can kind of follow along and keep track of all these predictions, and if you want to screenshot it or something and go back to it after you do see the movie, then maybe that'll be a good time too. And I do have kind of a loose structure for the order of predictions that I'm gonna make. First, I want to guess where are we going to begin? On that note, this is your spoiler warning. I'm gonna be spoiling Halloween Kills, probably Halloween 2018. I mean, like, probably the whole franchise. That won't include the entire franchise, but it might include stuff from, like, Halloween 2 or H2O. Let me just start out with the things that I do know, against my will, I might add. I know that there will be a time jump. It's a few years into the future, so there's a lot of room to guess where we're gonna start with Halloween Ends. And I also have to say, it's kind of weird that they did this. I, I am glad that the entire trilogy is not going to take place on one night, but Halloween Kills ends in such an emotionally charged way. I just don't know how they're going to be going from 9,000 back down to zero at the start of ends, because I could be wrong, but I feel like it's going to be hard to beat the energy of Halloween Kills. It started at 100 and ended at 9,000, and I just, I don't know, it's hard to guess where they're going to start from there, but I have a couple ideas. So for my first prediction on where I think we're going to begin in in Halloween Ends, I think that Allison will probably get out of Haddonfield. I think maybe she's gone to college, she's probably drifted away from Lori a little bit, she's just doing her best to put distance between her and Haddonfield. Or maybe she moved away with members of her dad's side of the family or something, but I also, I don't know, because maybe he was from Haddonfield too. So there's my first prediction, but I also think that the opposite thing could happen, and they're both equally plausible. I think it's possible that Allison could move in with Lori and they're both kind of leaning on one another and dealing with the fallout of losing so many people they love. So we have Allison and Lori living together in grief. And I'm not really sure which one feels more true to the characters. It felt like in Halloween Kills, they all really confronted their grief and they went out swinging, but they could walk back on all of that with the death of Karen, I mean, with the death of her dad, with her boyfriend. And Lori lost her daughter, which all of that obviously leaves lasting damage. And kind of a subset of that prediction, you know, you have the other hand where they've already experienced so much loss that maybe now they're hardened. Like a Sarah Connor Terminator moment where in the first movie she experienced a great loss, but then she got buff, so. But on the third hand, or fourth hand, where are we at now? They set up so much of Lori's relationship with Officer Hawkins that I feel like maybe they will be partners now. I don't think that it would be in Lori's nature to get married again, but maybe they live together, maybe they took Alice 
Allison in. So the three of them have kind of come together to try to rebuild their life. I'll be really interested to see the character development after any of those scenarios that I listed. I just worry about my favorite final girls because there are a lot of very dark avenues that they could take with their development. And I'm just hoping that it doesn't go anywhere super depressing. Moving on, I have heard tell on the internet yet again against my will that now there will be a pandemic theme to the movie. I don't know if it's gonna be COVID or if it's gonna be something made up, but this worries me. It worries me deeply, loves. It's going into this predictions video because I do feel like I saw it confirmed by David Gordon Green that there is going to be a pandemic in the Halloween universe as well as some more politically charged commentary. So for my fourth prediction, COVID has reached Haddonfield. I have a major con with that, but I also have like a decent pro with that. The major con is that they started this trilogy long before we were in a pandemic. So I'm like, did you just change your plans? I just worried that they scrapped more of the original plans than it was worth to include something like this. Because mid-trilogy, these guys were just like, yeah, let's change the very baseline rules of this universe. And get into even more politically charged commentary, which is just like... Why? Halloween Kills was loaded with social commentary, which I appreciated actually, but now I'd love to get back to the story itself and the characters we love, their development, the plot development with Michael, rather than focusing more on the world at large. I think 2018 dealt with this well because there was a really nice balance of them dealing with their grief and everything, but that wasn't the central, central focus of the story. I mean, it was, but it just, it felt natural. Like it was a very natural character development. And Halloween Kills, the commentary is just literally running at you dead on, so it was a little bit more intense. So I don't know, it would just be nice to take a break from that and get back to a more basic Halloween kind of story for the culmination of the trilogy, but I do trust that it'll all come together for a reason. The sort of pro that I have with this is that it might make Halloween Ends hit a little bit more close to home. Halloween Kills was the first movie of the entire franchise to give me a nightmare about Michael the night that I watched it. He was the most visceral and disturbing portrayal of the shape that I feel like the franchise has ever given us. I know some people make arguments for Rob Zombie's Halloween, but I feel like when your Michael is six foot eight and he's a giant pro wrestler, it's just like cheating. But anyways, maybe I found him the most disturbing in Kills because it was complemented so well by all of these characters that I felt like were really lovable and I felt attached to. So how do they elevate that and make it even more personal in the third installment? They bring real life horror into it and I can think of few things more horrifying than this pandemic, so maybe it'll work. The last section of opening predictions that I have is all to do with Michael. My first one being that Michael has disappeared. I don't think that he's been locked up this time. I think that he's just kind of been dormant in hiding, a little bit like Pennywise, you know, eating dogs and whatnot. Honestly, it's really hard to guess what Michael is gonna be up to because I don't think that he would have been captured because the whole town came after him, but he just literally killed everyone. But then it's also also hard to imagine a world where Michael has been roaming around for like five years or whatever and everyone hasn't lost their minds. So because I'm really back and forth with this, my sixth prediction is that Michael has been captured again. Because this one feels both likely and unlikely to me at the very same time. I think it would be a lot more spooky to open with some exposition that he's just been roaming around silently and hasn't killed anyone for five years and nobody knows why. Ever presence is Michael's specialty after all. Or, and this one doesn't feel super likely. I'm just trying to cover my bases. Maybe Michael is living in his house and he just never comes out. He's dormant. Yet again, it's kind of like the Pennywise situation. But it's just where he's happiest and nobody tries to challenge him because an entire mob went after him and he just hacked them all down. So his house is like condemned, the neighbors all evacuate, um, the surrounding neighborhood, everyone's slowly moving away. So it's kind of just like spreading the rot of his presence. Like he's just been slowly sucking all the life out of the town from his home base. I don't really like that theory, but I have to admit it's kind of hard to come up with a bunch of unique talking points for this character. Because other than that, with Lori and Michael and Allison, I don't care too much where the other side characters have ended up. And that's mostly because we lost almost all 
all of them except for Lindsay in the last movie. So that being said, let's move on to the next section. What information is going to be brought up from the past? Halloween Kills dug really deep and brought back a ton of legacy characters from the past, so I feel like with ends, rather than bringing even more people back, we will learn a lot more history. I just realized I didn't really share what the structure of all my predictions would be, so after that, I'm gonna be guessing some general plot points and maybe some like second act turning points. Then I'll be guessing possible endings of the movie, and that's where I actually feel most confident about a couple of the predictions I came up with. But real quick, if you've made it this far, I would love if you liked the video and subscribed. It really helps me out a lot, and it also lets the algorithm know that you would like to see more videos like this. And it lets me know too, so I can make more good stuff for you. Okay, so the history of Haddonfield. What do I think that we're going to be learning in Halloween Ends? I think that we're going to be learning a little bit more about Michael's family. Not in the Rob Zombie way, where you wondered why he was a killer, and then Zombie goes, well, there it is. He was abused. Mystery solved. I think it'll be in a more enigmatic way. <laughs> like, his family won't be fully fleshed out by any means. I think we might just get maybe some more flashbacks with them. So add that one to the list, a flashback with Michael's family. Or if it's not a flashback, then his parents or a parent or a cousin or something, they'll return to Haddonfield with some crucial information. That would be pretty crazy if Michael's parents returned, especially because they would then be very old. I was going to include this as its own prediction, but it's pretty weak because I also thought that maybe his parents would come back and it would just be like a fan service kind of moment and they wouldn't really provide any information. It would kind of just be a reiteration of, well, he was such a normal boy until the day he decided to pick up that knife and that mask. But I was like, no, nah, that's the lamest of possibilities that I could see happening with his parents. So I substituted that prediction for this one where I think that they might unearth a ton of Dr. Loomis's old files. They did actually give us Dr. Loomis and Halloween Kills, so I don't think that that's unreasonable because they're trying to end this thing once and for all. So I would imagine that they might want to try to gather any and all information that they could, even though they pretty much know everything that they need to about Michael. I mean, obviously something is missing because it's been this long and they still have not gotten rid of him. To be fair, like just take his head off. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that would be too easy, right? So yeah, maybe they will find some of Dr. Loomis's old files. And if they either find this in Dr. Loomis's files or if Michael's parents come back, I would think it would be interesting information if it was revealed that Michael was born in his house. This would be a really interesting story thread to me because I'm really interested in the house. I want to know more about it. We got treated to a lot of good moments back in his house with kills, and I think that that was done for a purpose. They even pointed out in Halloween Kills that he always goes back to his house. So this one's a little bit far out there, but maybe another piece of crucial information that would be revealed is that the Myers house is kind of like the nexus of evil. But the reason why Michael was the only member of his family to be affected like that is because he was born there. I'm not a super big fan of my own prediction with that, but it would just kind of give us a little bit more of a reason as to why he would keep returning to his house. Even if he was just born there, that would be enough of a reason for me. I don't need his house to be the nexus of evil, but it's just really fascinating to me that he always returns there. And I do feel like that might be an answer that we get in Halloween Ends, like what is so special about his house. And I will have more on his house later when we get to my predictions on the ending of the movie. But this is going to be my last prediction for the house for now. Maybe there is no reason why he returns to his house. It's just another one of those unsolvable riddles that Michael poses. He goes back to his house and that's just the way that it is. Moving on from Michael to some background info on our legacy characters. I don't have much here because I'm not super intrigued with the background of our legacy characters. I'm more interested in the progression of their development. And we already know pretty much everything that we need to about their family history, dealing with grief and all that stuff. But when I looked up the plot summary of Halloween Kills on Wikipedia and a few other websites, they all say that in the scene where Lori and Officer Hawkins are in the hospital, it's assumed that Officer Hawkins is Karen's father. And even on my rewatch of Kills, I was watching pretty carefully, but all that I picked up on is that, yeah, it's implied that they may be hooked up once. So I'm just gonna include on my predictions that it's revealed that Officer Hawkins is Karen's father. And not that it really matters because Karen has passed away, but it just might be information that's brought up if Laurie and Hawkins and Allison, if they all live together or something like that. That one isn't crucial, so let's not dwell. Let's in fact move on to my plot point predictions. I think that yet again, Lindsay might be one of our girls, like one of the main players in this movie. She was the only legacy character who wasn't a main character to survive. I don't count Officer Hawkins because he's brand new to us. So prediction number 14, Lindsay will be a main 
character. I know that's not really a plot point, but it's related to the plot and she was a side character last time. I think she'll be more central this time. There's a possibility that she might be the ringleader this time around because Allison has already had her moment of, do you really think that I'm gonna stand here while you go confront the man who killed my father? So we might not get a repeat of that. I lean a little bit more towards her having gotten out of Haddonfield and then getting roped back in somehow. So these next two predictions are kind of like a two for one. So I think Lindsay might become the new ringleader and then also that Allison will then follow the hero's journey. If you don't know what that is, it's a trope that was kind of solidified by ancient Greek myths and it's where a character follows this cycle. I think Allison will refuse to return. There will be some kind of turning point and then she accepts the mission, if you will. And this would be a hot ticket item right here, but what if she comes back because Lori is killed? That isn't even the last time that I will say that in this video, unfortunately. I don't think that Lori deserves to die in the first or second act, and quite honestly, the third act either, but that's really the only thing that I could see radicalizing Allison enough to make her want to return to Haddonfield if she's left. Lots of required hypotheticals for that one, but plausible in my opinion. Or the opposite could be true yet again, and Lori has to go on the hero's journey. Maybe after 40 years of being tormented with the belief that Michael has an obsession with you and he's going to come after you and then finding out that that was never the case and then having your daughter, her husband, your granddaughter's boyfriend, family have all those people killed, maybe that would finally be enough for Lori to just throw in the towel. And if that's the case, then our dear Allison would be the ringleader. Maybe she never stopped looking for Michael. Maybe her grief just turned to rage. And then she gets her grandmother to come out for one last battle with the boogeyman. It's a little bit meta, kind of representative of the younger generations who love Laurie Strode so much that we just keep pulling her back for these movies and putting her through hell. You also might argue that Allison would actually want to keep her safe so she wouldn't do that and I think that's valid, but they also do make a very good team. Like the ending of Halloween 2018, I love because it's just these three women, these three generations and they're all just beating Michael's ass. Which brings us, dear ladies and gents, to my predictions for the end of Halloween Ends. It's a nice segue because I think that the most reasonable conclusion for the ending of this trilogy is Allison and Lori taking out Michael together. This is pretty vague, I know, but I think that we'll probably get some really cool sequence of them just figuring stuff out and taking him down. I don't really know what I mean when I say figuring stuff out because I almost included in my predictions that they would unearth, you know, Dr. Loomis's files and maybe they would find an Achilles heel that Michael has, like a surefire way to kill him. But as I mentioned earlier, I mean, just like take off his head. Everyone's hitting him with bats and Karen stabs him like in the back of the neck or the shoulder or whatever. And it's like, just cut off his head. More on that later. So we have talked a lot about Michael and his house today, and I know that they used it for the showdown in Halloween Kills, but I don't find it unreasonable that they would go back there for the showdown of Halloween Ends. There was a really big theme of fire in the last two movies, and I feel like in Halloween Ends, the Myers house will burn down to the ground once and for all. Maybe with Michael in it, maybe not. I wanna say not because if he was laying down on the ground defeated and had to watch his house burn down, that would be really satisfying. That just feels very symbolic, especially if it turns out that his house is the birthplace of evil or some kind of nexus of evil. But this next one, this is the kicker, guys. This is the one I've been waiting to share. In Halloween H2O, spoilers, Lori kills Michael by beheading him. And that was quite honestly the epic moment that should have just completely ended the franchise. So I think that both to service the fans and to create the most logical and satisfying ending, I think that Lori and Michael will behead each other. I know, it's the second prediction where Lori dies, we just, we have to prepare for the worst. The reason why I feel pretty strongly that this is how it'll end is because of this line of dialogue in Halloween Kills. Let him come for me. Let him take my head as I take his. No. Maybe the only way he can die is if I die too. Like girl, that is oddly specific. So a part of me is hoping that that's not how they choose to end it because if it is, then that would be way too obvious. But it feels right to me, I don't know. And you've probably noticed there is still one more space left on this bingo card and you're thinking, well, wait, that was the best prediction I've ever heard in my entire life. What else could there possibly be? Well, I wanted to end on a lighter note and this is a genuine prediction. I think that there will be a nice epilogue, a nice little bow to wrap on the end of the trilogy. I think that Allison is gonna survive and I think that she'll put her 
roots down in Haddonfield and start a family and start a new generation of people who are not scared of Michael anymore. So yeah, we might see her married with a child and a baby, very Hunger Games epilogue style, where she's like, yes, our society used to live in fear of a man named Michael Myers, but your grandma chopped his head off. I just think that that would be nice. So on that note, there you have it. This is the final bingo card. I am super psyched to react to all of these predictions in about eight months from now. And because they just announced Scream 6, which we have talked about on my last live stream, let me know if I should make another one of these for Scream 6. They're a lot of fun. Even if you tell me not to, I'll probably make that video anyways. So stick around. Because I was hauntingly accurate about a lot of my Scream 5 predictions. You can watch my reaction to those predictions if you want to. And I have a good feeling about some of these. So we'll see how I do on this one. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons who ensure that I can make all of this content for you guys. Here's your special send off as always. I hope that you guys enjoyed that bonus content that I posted for you the other day because you deserve it. To all my other fellow horror icons that are here on this channel today, I hope that you have a wonderful day too. And thank you just for being here. If you made it to the end of the video, that shows support in a major way to me. So thank you. I hope the rest of you are doing your best to keep Halloween alive all year round. And I hope I see you in the next one. Bye. Sing